How do you normally access iSquare C devices? Are you using a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or a microcontroller? Well, today I will show you how you can use a standard desktop PC with a PCI Express slot to access any iSquare C devices. And for this purpose I will control this BMP280 temperature sensor over this old desktop PC. Before I start here is a small warning. Please don't use your 1000 euro workstation or gaming PC to reproduce what I'm doing in this video here. Because there is the danger to short wire some voltages and this could damage your motherboard or in the worst case destroy your, your whole PC. And this is why I'm using this very quite old PC because if I break something here the damage is not too big. So if you are trying to reproduce what I show, I'm showing you in this video, please make sure you know what you're doing and please make sure you don't short wire any voltages which could damage your computer. But with this out of the way, let's start. So I've already told you we will need an, a PCI Express port to access an iSquare C device. And so here I'm on the PCI Express Wikipedia article and if we look at the pinout of a PCI Express connector, we can see the pinout here. And up here we have some voltage and ground pins. Down here we have the pins which are required for transmitting and receiving data over PCI Express. But up here is the interesting part. Here we have a SM bus and JTAG port pins. And the SM bus are these two pins here, SM clock, SM data. And this looks kind of, familiar, kind of familiar like the I2C bus. So let's go and dig in a little bit deeper. If I go to the, um, the Wikipedia's article of the SM bus, we can see the system management bus, SM bus, is a single-ended simple two-wire bus for the purpose of lightweight communication. It is derived from I2C for communication with low bandwidth devices on a motherboard. So, Actually, SM bus is compatible with I2C bus. Okay, there are some small um, exceptions, but overall you can use an I2C device over the SM bus. And that is great. So how can we achieve this? So if you look here, you can see I have a PCI Express um, connection cable or extension cable and I have modified it a little bit. So here you can see the original um, cable and I have removed this um, PCI Express slot and I have made some new connections. So here I took pin 5 of side B which is SM clock and connected it to serial clock of my I2C device, a BMP280 temperature sensor. Then I took SM that so SM bus data and connected it to the I2C device serial data pin. And I could, I did the same for ground, I connected ground to my BMP280's ground pin and I connected 3.3 volts to the um, power supply pin of my sensor. And because we can see this in this video quite badly, I have a better picture which will show you the connections. So here it is, you can see it's the same PC and here you can see my modified um, PCI Express extension cable. I took these four pins and soldered this pin header to it and with jumper cables I've connected my BMP280 temperature sensor to it. So the, the last pin here is 3.3 watts and I've connected it to the VCC pin of my BMP280. The blue wire here is ground which is connected to ground of the BMP280. SDC is connected to the first pin here, which is SM bus clock. And then we have um, serial data, which is connected to this pin here. Okay, so now let's test it. For this purpose, I've connected to my PC here over SSH. And the first thing we have to check is if our PC has a uh, um, SM bus controller. So let's run LSPCI. And here we can see this device here is our SM bus controller. So this SM bus controller is from the NVIDIA Corporation. 
Yeah, but never mind. Then you need the I2C tools. You can install them, for example, on a Debian based distro with app install um, I2C tools, I think. Yeah, this should install them, but they are already installed here on my system. And if I run assemble um, a spin I2C detect, um, and give it the minus L option, it will list all the available buses. <laughs> but there are no available buses. The reason for this is we have to load some kernel modules to actually um, access the SM bus. So I will use modprobe I2C dev um, modprobe I2C minus SM bus. And now if I run I2C detect again, you can see I have five buses available now and two buses are actually labeled with SM bus. And you can see here, for Linux, these are, are just I2C controller. And now we can take these device files, for example, we have them here, I2C1, or, yeah, we have them here, and we could just open these files and use them as normal I2C controllers. I've actually made a video how you can access the I2C bus with a C program and I will put the link into the description. And with this uh, mechanism you can also access the SM bus now. But for today I will use the um, bash tools provided by I2C tools to access the sensor. But for this I will need the datasheet of the BMP 281st. So let me search for the datasheet. Sheet, okay. Yeah, here it is. And I need the memory map. Yeah. Okay, so here we have the memory map. It's a little bit small, but I hope you can read it. And we see here register D0 contains the chip ID, which should be 48 hexadecimal. So now let's try to read the chip ID. Or first, let's scan our bus to look for this device. Sorry, I'm a little bit too fast. So I know this slot here is connected to SMBus1 here. Yeah, we can see this here is the address of our BMP280 sensor. You don't believe me? Well, I have just disconnected the serial data pin and now we we'll run it again. And you can see this um, device here is gone. And if I reconnect it, and run I2C detect again, yeah, we can now see the device again. Okay, now let's access the registers of the BMP280 sensor. For this, I will use I2C get. I want to use I2C1. And I want to read from the device of the address 76, and I want to read the register D0. And this is 58 hexadecimal. And that's just the reset value we can find here in the datasheet. Okay, this config register at address F5 should be writable. Or, yeah, so first let's read it. So, okay, currently we have the value 2 in here, because I've already played around a little bit here. The reset value should be zero, but if I now write a value to it with I2C set, and that's right, seven one to it, for example. Oh, seven one could be could be bad. Let's write seven zero to it, and let's read it back. We can now see it has the value seven zero here, and maybe one more write two. Yeah, F five. Yeah, now we have the two here. Okay, so we could successfully access an I2C device by using the SM bus of a standard desktop PC. So the next time you have an I2C device, don't use a Raspberry Pi. Use your standard desktop computer instead. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> use whatever suits you best. Okay, so I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. Um, if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. And I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.